Planning Plan Commission meeting for Thursday, September 12, 2013, is called to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Commissioner Dorband. I'm here. Commissioner Johnson, I am here. Commissioner Powers. Here. Commissioner Schaff. Here. Commissioner Stylin. I'm here too. Commissioner Zangara. Here. And Chairman Rafato. Here. All present. Mr. Jennings, any changes to the agenda? Uh, there are no changes this evening. Citizens' concerns and comments for any citizens that might have some comments for tonight. Uh, no one is, besides the petitioners, <coughs> are in attendance tonight. Consent, to, uh, consent item, docket number SCB 81325, Hawthorne Suites, parents' approval of a wall sign. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Dorban, second by Commissioner Johnson. Mr. S Commissioner S Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Dorban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson, I vote yes. Commissioner Powers? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Stylin? Yes. Commissioner Zangara? Yes. And Chairman Rafano? Yes. Items for review. Docket number PC 13-7 and SCBA 13-26 DGI Supply 1480. South Wolf Road, minor site plan appearance, minor site plan and appearance approval for facade modifications and appearance approval of a wall sign. Uh, the petitioner here? There are two petitioners for that item. Neither one of them is currently in the room. Okay. We will hold. Docket number. SCBA 13 27, Mako 1026 South Milwaukee Avenue, appearance approval of a wall and freestanding sign, Mr. Jennings. Thank you. There are uh, petitioners present for this item. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I'll, I'll call the petitioners uh, up at this point. Um, the, the petitioner is requesting uh, appearance approval of a wall sign and freestanding sign. Uh, there was one note from the uh, the staff report uh, that we wanted to go over. Um, the landscaping, I believe there was a dimensioned quantified plan that we were looking for. And then with that, I would turn it over to the uh, to the petitioner. To so if you could it. please give your names okay. and business addresses, that'd be great. Sure. Tom Regas, R-E-G-A-S, uh, 1026 South Milwaukee Avenue, Willen, Illinois. Us. Uh, and? and Mike Williams, I'm with Saturn Signs, 240 Industrial Lane, Wheeling. Great, thank you. So if you can explain um, <clears throat> your petition here tonight. Um, well, we're looking to uh, change the fascia that you see in front of you where it's the black uh, Mako sign up front there, um, uh, putting in a new fascia and then landscape around the base um, when the modification to the area right there at the walking industrial um, it's I think it's gonna be 10 10 by 20 I think that was mr. Jennings question the landscaping oh, yes okay. I'm sorry clarification landscaping 10 by 20 um, we were measuring uh, that's I think that was his question was that, was that? yes did you happen to have it with you um, not exactly. I know I, I submitted the plans earlier. Um, if I can approach, sure. Uh, don't worry. It's not a it's not a courtroom. You don't have to approach. You can just walk <laughs> up. I'll explain that uh, for the microphone real quick. Um, 
Petitioner uh, was indicating, and I, I think we may have a plan view of this, uh, the Milwaukee Avenue uh, right away was widened uh, several years ago, and the sign in its, in its existing location has therefore become closer to the right of way. The landscaping that would be at the base of that sign, in order to keep it on the property, what the petitioner is suggesting is that rather than this configuration, that they probably have to shift it uh, northwest slightly so that it would be on the property uh, uh, rather than probably within. more kidney shaped than it is circular shaped. If you could talk into the microphone, that would be great. Probably more kidney shaped than circular shaped. Thank you. Um, the other concern, um, I don't know if the mic picked that up, but the other concern was the visibility from industrial lane looking north onto Milwaukee. Uh, it's already actually a little bit difficult, but this landscaping um, would be in that same area. So what, what staff would suggest is uh, with this 210 square foot area, um, a condition of approval allowing it to be reshaped to, to go uh, northwest of its current location so that it stays on the property. Thank you. Please go ahead. Other questions you we had? had um, Sorry. And so here is the, this is the um, uh, pull sign, but you also have a, um, a wall sign, a freestanding wall sign? Uh, correct. Not shown in that right picture. Okay. Uh, All right. We'll we'll go to we'll go to questions now. Um, Commissioner Zangara. Um. I see nothing wrong. I agree. Moving it uh, further in would definitely help with uh, traffic, especially because the car <coughs> pulling up there is not going to be able to see anything coming. I just dealt with this on somewhere else. So I mean, I have no real issues, and I think it would be better that the landscaping gets pushed sure. back not come you know not completely but you know just just enough that's really all I have great thank you Commissioner Steinle thank you mr. chairman I, I don't have any problems with the uh, change in design uh, of the landscaping I think it's a, a good idea to move it a little more <coughs> north westish uh, I think that'll that'll look nice as well I do have a uh, some questions about the uh, building sign um, you know we require uh, individual uh, letters normally that are raceway mounted and this appears to be appears to be one molded piece of plastic correct it's uh, <clears throat> basically it's not individual letters it's a can sign you know, not too different than what uh, Dunkin' Donuts just put up. Not too different than what uh, uh, KFC and um, and uh, who's with them? KFC and Taco, uh, Taco Bell. Bell. They have a big wave sign, and one says KFC, one says Taco Bell. It's a can sign that's in a shape. It's not lit by LED or neon. It's lit by by lamps. That's the only approved sign from Mako. You know, I mean, well, I have to keep in mind that this is a national franchise and. You know, that is the sign that is sold through Mako Corporate, and that is the sign that uh, Tom wants to purchase through Mako uh, Corporate. So it's not, it's not individual letters, it's a can sign. And the material that makes the background, I'll just say the background in general, opaque is? It's all painted from behind. It's subsurface painted. Okay, so it's not stuck on vinyl. No, no, sir. Lettering or, no, sir. or pieces that uh, mimic the shapes, whatever. It's all internally painted. Yeah, no, sir. It's all it's all subsurface painted. Okay. Um, you know, I, like I say, I, I we've worked for years to uh, come up with individual uh, letters, and I'm not sure that uh, this is exactly uh, what what I like. And then I have just a, a general question for you. Uh, can I ask you how long you've been at this site? I've owned our own. I, I rent the property. I've been the uh, franchise owner since March of uh, 2012, so about 18 months. Okay. Are, are you planning on doing any uh, upgrades to the facade or the building in general? Uh, <clears throat> well, 
we're a little concerned because every day I hear a uh, rumor, for lack of a better term, that we that that the airport's taking this property and they're doing this and this. And like I said, that's you know I, I don't listen to rumors, but everybody comes in and tells me that. So at this point, I don't see us doing anything on the front other than changing the sign. They repainted the um, before I got there some of the the, the, the Windows and all that—it looks yeah, pretty actually, good, repaired. Uh, yeah, it's all in good condition, and the bricks in good condition. Yeah. I mean, um, like I said, we're you know, taking you know baby steps, you know, moving forward, you know, without doing a huge remodel because uh, we're not doing that at this point. Because, like I said, I'm not sure if they're going to let us stay in front, you know, three years or two years or one year. I, I don't know. You, you folks would probably know more. Yeah, plus he doesn't own the building. And I, I mean, so. Well, I, I'm just curious, on your uh, web page, you have a, a picture of the building in Wheeling that isn't a building in Wheeling. We don't, we don't make the web page. The national company makes the web page. <laughs> believe me, I did not pick that building. I didn't pick it. Uh, when you make a page for the web page, and they didn't even tell me they did it until after I didn't even see it. So you're right. It's not the building that they took some generic building. I think every Mako, the 400 in the franchise, has the same picture. Well, not true. I mean, if you go look at the building in Palatine, it's got a picture Palatine? of the building they in Palatine. Right. They didn't have our. They must not have had our picture, our building. I don't know. I mean, I I just think if somebody's looking for sure we, we, your building, and they're looking for this building, yeah. they're not going to find you. You know, I mean. Yeah. Well, also, truthfully. I don't really, I'd rather have the new signs, you know, make it look nicer, and then we can take the photograph to make <coughs> things look better. Uh, obviously, the signs are currently dated, in my opinion. Probably one reason they didn't use your actual thing is because and of the, I think the signs that their, are up I, there I now. I don't think they had right. the photograph. I truly, truly didn't think of me. The uh, uh, street monument sign has an area that, that says, two lines of changeable letters. Are they going to be, <clears throat> you know, those kinds you get out there with a pole yes. and hang up the... Yes. Yes. What, what kind of events or things are you going to offer? Uh, uh, I think, you know... A $99 bumper special. No, we're not going to... Uh, <laughs> there's no money. Uh, mostly, you know, you know, happy holidays, uh, you know, painter wanted. Uh, Golf tournament. Golf tournament, uh, the stuff that both you see around. Uh, uh, you know, have a nice day. I, I, I haven't given it truthfully a lot of thought on what we're going to put up there. Obviously, it's going to be appropriate for what should be visible to other, you know, people driving up and down the, the street. You're not going to put uh, something. I mean, do you, do, you, right? do you have you know special yeah, sales specials, uh, uh, you know, we do. or? Bumpers. Auto detailing or right. anything Bumper like that. Specials to... once in a while, uh, you know, bring in your car. For, you know, we specialize in doing sprinters or something like that. Things that. Uh, you I know, think on TV they're advertising right now. Paint your whole car for three hundred dollars yes. or something, yeah. or yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to make sure that if you're if you're going to have that space occupied that you're going to use it with something and not just oh yeah no i i plan to use it uh, you know obviously to buy this sign's more expensive to buy it with the letters mm -hmm. and if you just had it you know tom opted to through me purchase a set of 500 letters along with the storage box and <laughs> and the pole changers so so yeah. yeah it's not going to remain empty all right thank you mr chairman <clears throat> commissioner dorbin thank you um i have i'm I assume, and I kind of reiterated that, that this is a corporate change. Everybody's changing their science. Is that right? Uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, I think because the, the, the original sign that's up there is probably 25 years old. That one should have been changed years ago. Yeah, 30 years old. Uh, we went with the newer corporate logo has changed since, you know, 25 years ago. Um, so this is the new corporate. This is all that's, brand new. That's what right. I was. Yeah, okay. this is all the latest. The okay. latest for for Mako's. Uh, their whole image is trying to upgrade <clears throat> their whole image. We're 
you know, if you see some of the commercials, we are, they're more of a collision-oriented upgrading, uh, do a makeover on your car, that type of thing. They're trying to bring up their quality and level, and we're also trying to do that in wheeling to do that, too, at this particular shop and my shop. Okay. Um, to dovetail on Commissioner Stylin's question, I just want to make sure, I'm just going to ask you a real favor sure. that we don't have, you know, a summer special up there in the middle of December, well, you know, that kind of thing. You no. know, I just, just so we're timely. How's that? that that's absolutely that's my correct. only favor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That won't be a um, and my last um, would be regarding the landscaping. I just want to make sure if you're going to, whatever you're going to put there, I don't want it to be skimpy. I want it to look like it, it's been there a while. You know, so if it, you know, if it takes a little bit extra effort to add a little more, I would really appreciate that. That's not, that's not a problem. Because it's, you know, it, even though you're in an industrial area, that is a spot along Milwaukee Avenue. It might be nice to see a little color in there. I think, so. I think you actually put in some reds and some other, you know, I'm not a, no, I, no, I did look at <laughs> yeah. you. I did and, look up uh, the plants, and I, and I like them. And, and I know he was saying, Tom, we don't want to get too big right away because plants grow. Right. And he goes, then it's a maintenance problem. But I don't want, I don't no, want something wanna, like no, this no, 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 put no, up. No, no. You know, so I just want it to look fairly, fairly. Well, I think everybody full. we want it to look great. Right. You know, you know, okay. So. Those are my only questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Schaff. Thank you. I really have. Uh, uh, no comments or questions, but uh, it's good that you upgrade. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Uh, I have nothing either. Commissioner Powers. Um, the only question I really have is, um, would it be possible around the sign that you could put up like a couple of layers of like landscape brick around the area of the... I mean, not on the, or you mean the... Yeah, like ring. around the exterior of it, like just put like a like like too high... It? Hmm? Like ring it? Yeah. The landscape brick? Sir, you, God, <clears throat> actually driving here is something I didn't pay attention to before over on Industrial and Milwaukee. Just just beyond the sign, it goes up about three feet. Okay. It's it's really sunk down there. And, uh, you know, and, and you're also talking an additional cost, you know, to put uh, brick around there. Now, if you want to see some landscape timber, is at a cheaper cost, but they rot away. I mean, just landscape looks nice when it's just got a natural border. You know, I mean, it, yeah, it'd be nice to see you know, four foot of brick and fountains and all that, but, um, you know, again, hey. you know, <laughs> we don't own the property. He doesn't own the property. Because we've had other people come in and they've tied up the signs, but I understand your concern about the, the three feet, so I really have nothing else. Thank you. Andrew, uh, the interpretation of the wall sign as far as individual letters. So the, uh, the interpretation is that when it's illuminated to give the appearance of individual letters, uh, the commission in the past, um, the, the way that the background has been blacked out in the past has been buried. I, I would say of the ones where the, the illumination is a single bulb or a handful of, uh, a handful of tubes um, and the, uh, the uh, opacity is achieved by some other method, you've got um, cut out on the aluminum, you have like an aluminum face with a cut out um, for the plexiglass. Um, in this case, with the, the limited um, corporate options uh, and talking to the sign company, uh, applying something to the back seems to be possibly the most effective way. What, what we're concerned about is that whatever's applied to the back, once it's lit, is truly opaque. So that was the reason for the condition of approval, is that once the, the backing is in there, if it's not working, uh, we have the, the ability to uh, work with them on um, putting another layer in. But did you say the, the, this, the wall sign wasn't lit or was lit? The, the existing one or the one we're proposing? The one you're proposing. Oh, it's, it's internally lit with, with fluorescent lamps like these. All right. So, given the opaque background and the lighting, it will give the appearance of an individual lettered sign. When so well, the, the the idea of it is, it's kind of hard to show on this, but this area is white, 
And so the backing is going to be applied to everything that isn't the letters. So that in between the letters will appear opaque. Correct. Black is opaque. Everything else would be illuminated. The, the blue and the red will be illuminated? As it is now, as it comes from corporate, and I don't know if they would uh, like deviating from that, but, you know, again, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a can sign. You know, not any different than can signs that are on poles with radius corners. This one just has oh. a, sh a sh distinctive shape to it. But it's, not, it's a can sign that's not our code. And the, and, the, and, and the signs that are on KFC, on on Dunkin' Donuts are very distinct and are very raised and are different and and actually their cans I think in some cases are shaped uh, I'm not sure about in, in some of the, the cases letters. that we've yeah. had have been shaped around the letters the letters stick up like three inches up. right right the, the letters are embossed as well it's not a flat face that's what he, the question was I from the from the staff perspective on this, the the KFC sign predates the code by several years. The Dunkin' Donuts sign does not comply with the code, and they're in code enforcement with us right now. So I wouldn't use either one of those <laughs> for, for the commission as well. I would not use either one of those as an example of. of we've had we have had several other signs we come have. through. <coughs> I would have a have a backer on them of some sort. I remember well, the subway at the subway at Walmart. The was a it was a can sign, but it was shaped. It was shaped in the manner that it gave the appearance of individual signs. Well, there is an option letters. here. The part that's blue outside of the black, thick shadow around uh, the white letters, Mako. Um, we can paint that opaque, so that the only thing that would light up would be the white Mako. Um, if okay, that little bit blue shadow it's got on there, and uh, you know that red underscore, we could paint that. We can paint all that blue black, if if that is what you're looking for. I think that red underscore would look like a tagline, right? Uh, yeah, you see that in a lot of signs around. You know, some kind of underscore or something. We we kind of promote tagline oh, okay. additions to signs. Okay. So. Right. I mean, if that's what you're looking for, I guess we'll we'll be glad to do. He paints. <laughs> yeah, we have plenty of paint. Uh -huh. No, I have, I have no other comments. Uh, landscaping is fine. Any other questions? Is there, is there a consensus on blacking out the blue area so that the lettering and the uh, red? I heard, I saw one nod. I don't know what that. Just out of curiosity, with that part lighting up blue, does that look bad? It makes it look more like a can sign. Yes. And which you is know, and if, what it is. if we're looking for individual letters, blocking out the blue will make it look more individualistic. So Okay. I I'd go for blocking it out, giving it a try. When you say blacking out, you're saying make it opaque. Is that is that what we're talking about? Okay. Yes. Yes, correct. It would be opaque. I didn't know. Is everybody in agreement with that? Some yes. Nods? Uh, well, are are the the sides uh, that where the letters are raised that would still be blue, like where the all the sides? Yeah. If that's permissible, the, the sides of the letters. Um, in the I think in. Yeah. Between the letters is black. Well, no, no. Yeah. There's there's Between, a slight but there's a slight blue uh, um, shadow. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Like a drop shadow coming off the letters okay. on the bottom and on the right okay. side, and sure. and if that's permissible. Otherwise, if you want that blocked out too. Well, well I think that, that would, would make it. I think that would make it look even more raised and separated. Okay. Right, if that was lit. Right. Do you have that, Andrew? I have it phrased as the, the blue background area. Outside of the letters. So, what conditions uh, do we have? I'll, I'll read through all of them. 
Uh, number one, that the proposed cloud sign with the opaque backing gives the appearance of individually mounted letters. Number two, that if the opacity of the background is not achieved at installation, the sign should be modified to include a more substantial backing material. Number three, the landscape plan with greater detail regarding uh, specific plant quality, uh, excuse me, quantities and sizes be reviewed prior to installation with the landscape area shifted to the northwest to aid, visibil uh, excuse me, aid visibility and avoid the street right of way. And number four, the blue background outside of the letters in the wall sign also include an opaque backing material. Okay, great. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Dorban, seconded by Commissioner Powers. Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Dorban. Yes. Commissioner Powers. Yes. Commissioner Johnson, I say yes. Commissioner Schaff. Yes. Commissioner Stylin. Yes. Commissioner Zangara. Yes. And Chairman Rafano. No. Reason for the no is that appearance is still a can sign. It just doesn't doesn't it doesn't help the way it was constructed. I know that's what was given to you, but <clears throat> we set precedent when we do something like this. You've got to pass, so it's not an issue. Thank you. You'll just have something to sign. <clears throat> you can be on your way. Good luck. Oh. Uh, the awning is is okay. Yes. Did we address the awning. We didn't even talk about the awning. Is there an awning? An awning. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yep. Excuse me. All good. Thank you, General. That was fine. But you know, we do have a facade improvement program for properties that are in a TIF area. And if you'd like to make your building or get the landlord to make your building look like that, I think uh, we'd really like it. There's a petitioner here for docket number PC-13, PC-13-7, SBA 13-26, DGI Supply, 1480 South Wolf Road. Yes. You look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Big business today. Member of the communities, uh, my name is Matt Noodleman. Uh, I'm representing my address or the address of the property. I'm from Skokie 55, West Madison Street, Skokie, Illinois. Great. So if you can explain um, what's going to be happening on this building. Um, I, I believe the, the next slide will demonstrate that we are replacing the existing dual signage with a similar sized new corporate logo and uh, brand banding around the uh, upper portion of the masonry facade to give the facade a little bit more of a, a appealing street frontage and uh, tie it together with the existing street signage and allow people that are coming to the property to better uh, visualize where the actual building is. Okay. Oh, I didn't Any other comments? No. We will start with um, Commissioner Stanley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of the concerns in that was listed in our packet had to do, I think, with the uh, the new banding colors, which I, which I really like. But did it go all the way around the 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 building? No, it's only it's only the north facade and the west facade to address the street frontage. East, east facade. East, yes, excuse me. North and east. <clears throat> and Andrew, yes. there was a concern in in the packet uh, in that area. Yes. No. Let me read through it real fast. Yeah, 
Yeah, page 17 has the, doesn't have the band on there, but it, but your rendering, you're showing it does have it there now. I'm, 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 I'm top. Oh, sorry. The, the little blue band on the bottom. Can, is there a cursor that you could point to so I can move on? Second. Uh, the, there's a blue, there's a blue band on the bottom. On this side, over here, the little picture? Yes, that, that, is, that is following the masonry coursing that is already existing. Yeah, there's a top there's a, blue band and a bottom blue yes, band. But when you go over to that ah, yes, okay. picture. So, so the, uh, okay, so I'm not sure why it's not being shown there, but the banding will follow the existing soldier course the entire length so, of that. So there will be blue? There will be blue white lip, yes. Okay. Um, I think it's. Uh, remarkable update to the building. I mean, it's surprising how something that small can really change the perception, you know, the perception of the building. So I, I think it's really nice. So thank you for... Yeah, I mean, our, inten our intention is to kind of lend more uh, aesthetic interest to that area of Wolf Road. You've got a lot of industrial areas, and I think this will help, you know, otherwise it was a nondescript building. But you will continue that band <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I apologize that it's not in the rendering itself, but yes, it will Great. be in the air. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Dorman. Thank you. Um, the, actually, the picture that you have up there now, in la when you enlarge it on our on our iPads, it shows that the driveway is all cracked. Have they you? The, the company has actually just been in the process of repaving the front area and the area directly in front of the, uh, the um, service doors. So they are okay. in the process of improving. Okay, improving. so that's all going to be done. Great. Yes. Okay. Actually, the, the front area is already completed and they are moving backwards. Perfect. So that'll be um, I think this looks great. Well, it is an amazing improvement. I mean, just doing this much is great. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Schiff. Thank you. I really have no comments other than uh, it is quite uh, uh, descriptive now, rather than non-descriptive when, uh, uh, when I drove by just the other day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Johnson. Uh, I, I just agree that it is uh, a great improvement. Um, I have no other comments. Thank you. Commissioner Powers. I have nothing. Looks great. Thank you. Commissioner Zangar. I just have to say, though, that the photo that's up there, we talked about that band, but also that picture of the will calls out the wrong spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, technical glitch. I know. <laughs> but no, otherwise I have no comments. <clears throat> so um, right now there is a aluminum band on the top. Is it aluminum? Yeah, it's, a, it's an aluminum parapet cap. Right, and it, that cap is going to stay there? Yes, correct. And it's going to be, it's right now a bronze colored or brown? brown it's, it's, it's a brown color, yeah. And it's going to stay brown? Correct. Okay. And then the, the paint, you're painting over brick. Mm -hmm. I just I shudder to think about painting over brick. Um, the, the paint that you use, we have a... Um, we have a building in Wheeling that was had a red stripe, correct? That, if I'm not mistaken, we, we just talked about it probably a couple of weeks ago, that it was starting to peel. Yeah, and I, I just, it, to me, painting brick turns into a maintenance nightmare. Uh, uh, sir, if you... I actually went and took pictures of it, which I don't know if, uh, Andrew, that uh, you Not in this have line. these on Not this. Not in this line. There's two buildings there, and I was concerned with, this, with the same thing. The one building that's not peeling looks great. The one bil uh, building next to it, which is further north, that looks like it's peeling, it's not. It's the fascia of the brick is all delaminating. Mm -hmm. I took extensive pictures of that, and I, I believe I sent those to you, but the, yes. they're not available for, for I, I did not put them in the slideshow. Oh, okay. The, it's, it's not the paint, I we've think. Been, and we've been working with that particular building owner. Okay. Um, we actually are going back out again tomorrow to uh, look at the finished product. Um, but, yes, the, the 
it is a in that case it appears to be a, a a maintenance issue unrelated to the paint and if I can further address that um, being aware of that issue on that particular building we went and had uh, masonry tuck pointing done all the areas that are going to be painted in advance of this as preparation um, we're working with Bayer uh, to use their marquee line of products which is a relatively new um, technologically innovative uh, paint solution that has the ability to uh, they call it a self-cleaning product and that uh, as it absorbs and lets moisture breathe through it actually repels dirt grit water relatively soon after you apply it so the longevity the color fading doesn't have an issue like you would have seen even five or ten years ago with with newer solutions so the paint itself is actually a relatively innovative product and hopefully will give us at least 10 or 15 years I had a manufacturer's rep come out and source the project so I'm I'm relatively confident that what you see here will be what you see at least 10 hopefully 15 years from now the company itself um, is very concerned about maintaining the appearance of the building they've obviously gone through with the pavement there they went ahead and spent the additional dollars to do the tuck pointing um, they are committed to doing any maintenance that might be an issue 5 10 15 years from now um, I'm happy to provide you with the names and contacts of the people at the company the vendors that we're using um, you know my reputation is such that you know, I, w I would like this to be um, as good as it looks from day one as far into the future as we can um, you know none of the, I mean none of the products uh, have any inclination other than the use as we're intending it to do so to have the longevity that we expect Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Do I have a motion? So move for Mr. Chairman. Let's uh, which? do um, are, Were there any? Uh, uh, PC 13 7 has one condition. There are no conditions on the sign. The condition on PC 13 7 is that the lower blue banding continue on the north elevation as is shown on the east elevation. Okay. Great. So uh, motion for PC 13 7. So moved. Oh. Oh. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Stylin, second by Commissioner Schaff. <coughs> Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Stylin. Yes. Commissioner Schaff. Yes. Commissioner Dorband. Yes. Commissioner Johnson, I say yes. Commissioner Powers. Yes. Commissioner Zangara. Yes. And Chairman Rafato. Yes. A hesitant yes. Yes, very much so. Uh, do I have a motion on SCBA 13 26? <coughs> appearance approval of a wall sign. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Powers. Commissioner Johnson votes yes. Commissioner Powers? Yes. Commissioner Dorband? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Stylin? Yes. Commissioner Zangara? Yes. And Chairman Rafado? Yes. Thank you. You'll have Thank two you. things to sign. Thank you all again. Thank Members you. The committee. Thank you. <coughs> You had the right end planned. Yep. Is there another one coming out too? 
Oh, that's both of them. Here comes the other one. Calling, calling docket number 2013-14 Banquet Facility 1918 South Wolf Road Special Use Site Plan Approval for an Assembly Hall. Mr. Secretary. Docket 2013-14. David Muriello, architect for Nariman Solka. I hope that's right. Uh, owner is seeking a special use site plan approval as required under Chapter 19-06 Commercial Districts, Chapter 19-10 Use Regulations, Chapter 19-12 Site Plan Approval Requirements, <laughs> and Associated Sections to establish a banquet facility classified as an assembly hall at 1918 South Wolf Road. Standards for special use. A zoning special use as defined in Title 19 of the Village of Wheeling Zoning is a use of a parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to circumstances or effects on the surrounding properties that may adversely affect them. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Plan Commission at the public hearing why the request meets the conditions of the Village Code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that their request for a special use meets the standards established in Title 19. The Commission Chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting material submitted, the Plan Commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the Village Board. Thank you. Mr. Jennings? Just a couple of quick notes um, that I think I'll just save for um, after the petitioner's presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Good evening. Will, you, will all three of you be speaking tonight? I would assume. Yes. Yes. Okay. Could you all please raise your right hand? You swear the testimony you give tonight to be the truth? Yes. yes. Could you individually state your name and work address into the microphone for our recording secretary? Uh, it's David Muriello. I am at 635 North Lombard Avenue in Oak Park. Great. Thank you. Good evening. I'm David Wisniewski, uh, the property owner's attorney. My business address is 33 South Wolf Road in Prospect Heights. Great. Thank you. My name is Ned Misolka. I'm the property owner. My address is 25 Soft Wolf Road, and I own the property since 1990. Thank you. Thank you. So if you could present uh, whoever is going to present to us, if you can start. Um, this project is, uh, as you can see. If you could get a little bit closer to sure. the microphone. Thank you. Sure. Um, I must apologize. Normally, I just come up here and answer questions, <laughs> which I'll, I will do. I'm sure you'll be able to do that in a, yeah. in a bit. <laughs> um, but just generally, it's a vacant commercial space, and we're turning it into a banquet hall. So there's a, um, it's essentially an interior remodeling in that we're not proposing to change the facade of the building. We are proposing to add an awning. And I know there's some comments about that. Um, the lobby at the front, uh, hand, uh, accessible toilet rooms, coat room, bride's room, a big kitchen in the back uh, with access to the rear. And we just try to maximize the number of tables and chairs we can get in there. There are three portable bars and one fixed bar that's uh, laid out in such a way that it can the banquet hall proper can be closed off and they can accommodate a small function in the front just in the lobby area and that's why that bar opens uh, both east and west uh, there's going to be all new finishes in the space carpet tile on the floor 
Uh, there's a new drop acoustic tile ceiling. And, uh, you know, that big kitchen there. Uh, there's going to be a moving, a, mo a movable dance floor. It's dashed in on that plan. It would just be, uh, it's an oak in sections. It's down at the floor line. And we're also proposing a movable, a portable stage. And I know there's some comments about exiting around that thing, so happy to answer questions about that. So that's the big picture. Great. Thank you. Sure. We'll start with Commissioner Dorban. Thank you. Um, let me think about some of these questions I had. I had a few here. Um, one of my questions was regarding the uh, comment from our uh, health department about, um, oh my goodness, um, about uh, the lack of dry storage. Right. Um, what we, we are going to comply. We will provide the dry storage area they're asking for. What I actually have here is something unusual in my practice. We have a kitchen that's actually too big. Okay, this is just the way the space divided out. Um, so there's plenty of space in here, and, and matter of fact, the needs are the needs for this kitchen. We've gone back and forth with the owner about um, just how much do you prepare off site and bring in, and how much you prepare on site. Obviously, it's a full commercial kitchen, but we are going to provide the dry storage there. Which support. brings to mind another question then, because this is going to, is this not, maybe this is going to go to staff, is this not going to change the actual layout and the, the way it looks now? And how do we address that? If we approve that, we really are not getting a full picture of where the dry storage is going to go. So how do we address that? It's not entirely unusual. What we have um, in your typical restaurant situation, there is a space limitation, uh, and and as the petitioner's architect has just referred to in this in this case, that that, that does not appear to be an issue. Uh, the health department review related to dry storage is um, at this stage essentially a courtesy review to let them know what's coming during permitting. The for a restaurant that is smaller and space limited, it, it is much more critical because providing that dry storage might actually take away from seats. Uh, in, in this case, they don't have that issue. I think it's sufficient at this point for them to be aware that they will have to comply with the dry storage requirement, uh, and it is unlikely that it will have an impact on their seating. Okay, then the other question was that they talked about um, the health officer comment that the facility has a large number of tables and chairs without a clear plan for storage during smaller events. So how are you going to address that? Um, Mr. Suka has a tenant next door. I just learned this tonight, who is offering to provide that storage. Right? Tenant right here. We've got a piece of wall we can put a door on. So, <clears throat> I mean, just let me say generally, we will provide table and chair storage as. So, is there noted. is there a connecting door? Is that what you're yes. telling me? That's okay. one option. Now, I I really shouldn't speak for the owner uh, on this exactly how we intend to comply with the requirement, but I'm here to say that it's 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 a big space. It's easy. Typically, when we store tables and chairs in the facility proper, it's a number of very long, skinny rooms with a door at one end, and it's a way of not taking up more floor area. And the idea is you you can only get in at one end, so you bring a table and bring it. You roll them to the far end. Same with chairs, and you back your way out. So my point is that it's <clears throat> it's a very reasonable request, and it's. Uh, not going to be hard to do so and we're here to commit to doing it as a follow-up um the tenant is directly to the east that's the la receta grocery store they have approximately three thousand square feet at the rear of the store that they have not been using and have been uh, begging uh, dr solka to take back from them so 
that's uh, space that would be usable for the table and chair storage. Now also the plan calls for 456 seats. There's also going to be dividers in the banquet hall because it's going to be very rare that there's a banquet of 400 plus people so that the rooms could be seg uh, subdivided and there would be additional storage within the banquet hall. Uh, the other uh, question I had was um, the striping of the additional, sta additional stalls that are in the parking lot. Are you, are you going to, are you planning on doing that so that you have the additional parking already striped? Whatever Mr. Jennings recommended will be done. Also, uh, Dr. Solka owns additional land behind this property that really hasn't been identified. Uh, he owns some, he purchased some land from the railroad. So beyond the asphalt, he has grassland that could be asphalted over and striped. Well, if that's the case and you would be using that, that, then I have some other additional concerns about lighting back there in case somebody is going to be parking back there, even if you would decide to have your staff pack, you know, park back there or whatnot, I would want to make sure that it's well lit for safety's sake. So, I, I mean, that's, that's another issue and I think that if that's going to be used that way, then it would have to come back here. Am I correct, Andrew? That's correct. If the, if the, the staff review on this uh, refers to existing paved area, they have drive aisles that are uh, oversized. Um, there are some areas of the existing paved uh, lot that are not striped. There's no apparent reason that they, why they couldn't be striped. Uh, that was more of what we were referring to. If they do, in fact, uh, need to return for uh, additional pavement in the future, we would have an additional site plan review. Um, based on the things that I've just discussed, are, are those things that necessary to be added in as far as conditions? Relating to additional pavement, I, I, at this point I don't think so. I think the staff suggestion relating to striping the, um, the paved area uh, is sufficient at this, at this stage. We've got uh, the amount that we project being short uh, includes full occupancy of this at the same time as full occupancy of every other use um, in, the, in, the, in the center. And by the nature of the banquet facility, we don't anticipate that to be uh, a likely scenario. So what we're, what we're looking for is sort of the worst case scenario of full utilization of this space at a time when everything else is operating. And uh, if we find that to be the case, then I think there is actually pavement available to stripe. And what about the issue with the dry storage and the uh, storage of the tables that was brought the, in our packet? As it is right now, I've added uh, a condition of approval relating to uh, table and chair storage, uh, divider walls, and um, we'll refer to the dry storage requirement. Excuse me, dry storage requirement as well. Okay, that's the only question I have. Thank you. Commissioner Schaff. Thank you. Um, your subdivision, uh, how, how are you going to uh, do that on, on this plan? Are you going to just well, basically... Subdividing the banquet hall walls? Yes. The plan is to do it with curtains. With curtains? Yeah, on a track super tall made for this uh made for this kind of use sorry yeah uh fireproof curtains it's a very low tech kind of way to do it um i find that the motorized if you could talk into the microphone sorry. it'd be great um it's a uh it's sort of a low tech approach to having ways to subdivide your space and, uh, uh, yeah I, I i can see but but it's going to be very difficult then to run two events uh, at the same time. Is that your intention, is <coughs> to do that? I would have to. No. <coughs> so why subdivide it's it then? Just to make it pleasant for people that are there. If there are 200, 300 people, you don't want to give them a space of 5,000 people. Just to make it pleasant for them, limited space. No, we are not going to have two events. We cannot have two events at the same time. Okay. It's not designed for that purpose. Okay. Uh, 
I know that this is only a, a uh, an interior uh, modifications uh, to your banquet hall, but um, there certainly seems to me to be some exterior uh, work, uh, especially in the parking lot for landscaping, uh, parking, striping. Uh, there does need seem to to be a need for an upgrade on that parking, yes. and I would hope that you would consider consider that because uh, uh, if the outside is not presentable, uh, the the no matter what the inside looks like, people aren't going to like it. Those are my comments. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Thank you. My biggest concern with these plans is the, the life safety code, and I wish our fire inspector were here today to discuss his findings on this, because he had quite a few um, just in this preliminary plan. The, the exits that he talks about, and if you do have that portable stage set up, you're really limiting how you're going to get people out of there. Um, and now we're talking about possibly uh, putting a hole through the wall into the uh, grocery store for extra storage and things like that that I know he wasn't aware of. Um, hey, if, if you like, I'd like to speak to all of those comments, all, all of these sure, comments that we're prepared to. Okay. Uh, first of all, the regarding exiting. The analysis was we were proposing three exits. Their analysis was is that the rear exit through the kitchen is not allowed because you're going through, and I understand. Right. But then he went on to say that by the calculations, you only need the two front exits, and there is enough <coughs> overall exit width to comply with the code. Now, <clears throat> I, um, what, I'm in discussions with my client right now because I don't feel good about not being able to get out the back way. So regardless of whether a third exit is required, the way you do it is you take about six feet away from the south end of the kitchen, just put a hallway down there. We have a door. We just put a new door out of the alley. It's a very easy change. It's not a code requirement, um, but I am recommending it because I just, you know, God forbid, there's something going on at this end of the place, and you've got 400 people in there. Guess what? They're going to want to, you know, half are going to want to go one way and the other way. So he, uh, the fire department also took issue with the, my method uh, for calculating travel distance. I've already gone through it already. We have, we have with the three exit ways, our travel distances are, uh, half as long as are allowed already and if the 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 recalculation that he's requiring is um going to add we're still going to be at least well under the maximum travel distances let me remind everybody that there's a sprinkler system in the building um then they also talked about that the uh they want us to redo the occupancy load calculation we're going to do it. I mean, I, with the various changes that we're having, um, we, I doubt we're going to end up with this 456 seats that we're proposing. But you know, we're just going to comply. Um, the, they also brought up the wanting table and chair storage. So we've already uh, spoken about that. Um, the last problem or thing that they mentioned is the. Portable stage, I just plopped it on the drawings. We can absolutely move that to, you know, it's, it's located here. You just put it here up against the wall. We don't have an exit problem anymore. So that's, I think with the, uh, with the addition of the table and chair storage in whatever way is acceptable, um, and maintaining a third exit through the back of the building. Uh, 
we will hit all the points we have to hit and moving the stage. What's, me. what's the total depth of this unit? You know, offhand, I don't see Oh, that gosh. <clears throat> 175 feet wide. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't <It's> help. <laughs> All right, so I would say it's about 75 by 125. It's pretty close. 140. One, yeah. 140. 75 feet by 140 feet. Sorry. Okay. And that's gross. I'm that's just trying outside. to get a good picture. Um, if I could just interject for one second before we leave the fire department comments yes. behind. Uh, I, I did speak with the fire department today on this to go through the comments with them. Um, they were also fairly comfortable. Of course, they did not know about the the response on the table and chair storage, so I would suggest that as a condition of approval for them to take a look at. Uh, the fire department was comfortable with the idea of a third exit. Uh, we did go over how the, uh, the two exits up front um, could uh, likely meet the code um, based on uh, the diagonal distance of this space. Um, so the fire department was, uh, given the size of the space and the, the <coughs> width of the front, uh, felt that it was entirely possible to meet the code. Um, they, they do uh, have a lot of comments, but we did go through them and, and uh, the fire department was fairly comfortable that this could be done. Um, and of course, with the information that a third exit is being contemplated that of course would be uh, helpful as well well this ends up being another case where what we're seeing is not the final concept even because we're talking about another door out the back a door to the neighbors um, I just have trouble putting this through without having more of the details done um, I, that's all I have for now. Thanks. Commissioner Powers. Uh, are you planning on putting any kind of sign on the facade at all? Yes. Okay, and you'll be coming back for a sign? Yeah. What about the post sign off of Wolf Road? Are you going to be putting the establishment name on there too? Yes. So you'll be coming back for yeah. that? Because there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that sign. You're coming in for a new sign and everything? Yes. We haven't chosen a name yet. Okay. But you're going to come back for a whole new post sign and right. everything? Or are you just going to remodel that sign? No, I think they're just going to re rehab the existing sign. Sorry we'll come back know. with... Um, if you could speak... Excuse me. <laughs> we'll come back with plans for signage. Okay. Um... <laughs> There was a mentioning, mentioning of uh, awning yes. in there. Is that, is that, I mean, I see the facade there. Is it something outside of the facade? It's going to be attached to the facade? Or where do you, how do I envision it, seeing the awning it, that it, you're proposing? It is attached to the facade. I mean, there's a, I call it a colonnade on this building. When you, when you step outside the doors, you're actually under roof. And the, the big columns that are outboard or easterly, that's really where the front of the building is above, so the wall is set back. It's just a chopping center sort of affair to keep people out of the rain. And the signage will be mounted, face mounted to that. It's, um, well, the awn I'm sorry, we're we talking about the awning. The awning is also going to be a retractable awning. So is that attached to like the facade and goes out from the facade and goes out? Yes. Okay. And then it's one of the ones that starts up here. It's in a roll, just comes down. Okay. But we, you know, we obviously we understand we have to uh, come back with specifics about that. And there's the your issue of clearance underneath for the fire trucks. And, you know, I think we need 12 feet of clearance, something like that. Okay. I kind of echo Commissioner Johnson's concerns about the the storage and doors and stuff like that. It's like, to me, I think this plan needs a little bit more work. I'm not sure if I can approve it by, by seeing what I'm seeing and hearing what I'm hearing because it seems like dynamically things are changing and I don't know if I should be concerned of, if I should be concerned about what goes on within the building, but um, as I'm seeing it now, it seems like things are going to flow. There's dry storage area and all this other stuff. 
movable curtain and I didn't even know that the lobby, I, I was kind of questioning why the bar was open from both ends and I kind of found out today that you're going to use that front part for like a, a little party area and close off the rest which, which kind of makes sense because I didn't know why there were bathrooms in the back and bathrooms in the front. Now it kind of makes sense to me. I, you know all the facilities I've ever been to the bathrooms are always in the front and then you go in the back and it's got all the tables, the rooms and the bar and everything else. Let me just interject those bathrooms at the back there are existing toilet rooms back there. Okay. So it's a budget consideration okay. to start with. Obviously, we knew we had to have some toilet facilities up at the front. Okay. You know, regardless. But yeah, normally they'd all be right up. Normally they'd all be right up front. All right, that's all I have for now. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Sangar. Thank you. Um, the doors in the front, the vestibule, and then there's that second set of doors. Are those existing? Yeah, the the, the ones the are, swings too. Yeah, like one swings in, one swings yeah. out. Is there a way to change those? I'm just thinking, you know, for fire. We were talking about fire safety. What um, the one by the banquet? The one when when we did the uh, did the exiting calculation. Mm -hmm. What they they want to see is what's the width of the door. By the way, they're 42 inch doors, three and a half feet, and the in swinging door, of course, does not count right. as an exit way. And we didn't count that, so it's just the, just the outswing doors that count. So mathematically, we complied with the the code requirements. Um, and is yeah. it confusing for people? Yeah, of course. It is. I just I go to visit the building. I still get, always pull the wrong, uh, you know, try the wrong way in. So, but they're existing. It's you know an aluminum anodized aluminum right. storefront, and it's in. It's in pretty good condition, you know. It's not brand new, but um, so the plan was just to utilize that as is. Also, you talked about the kitchen kitchen being oversized. You talked about the existing bathrooms. A suggestion: Can you add a employee or kitchen restroom? Because I know a lot. Last thing you really want is a cook coming into the bathroom with the bride or the groom if there's enough space is there a way you know you, you said maybe making a corridor that's going to be an exit could we oh, I, we could certainly you know discuss that it's a certainly becomes a, another you know aspect of a budget right um so i i don't feel comfortable committing to that personally and, um but good point i'd like to make a comment about the kitchen there's been much discussion about dry storage and although this is a big kitchen, it is not contemplated that it is going to be used for lots of cooking. All of the food for the catering uh, for the banquet uh, banquets is going to be catered in. So what you're going to have is like warming trays and sinks to clean up the dishes. So even though everyone's making requirements for dry storage, there's actually going to be no food stored and cooked on the premises. It's all coming in from caterers. You have a grill, you have prep, you have ovens, yeah. it can be done. No, so it can be done. Irrespective of what you say, it still can be done. By, by Sorry, right, let me go, just, go ahead. I just had a further thought about the employee uh, toilet room. We actually need two. Right. You know, um, so it's, excuse me. Well, two, and then I saw that the, you have the, you're calling it a service sink. Is it a mop sink or is it a service sink over there? Because uh, it's, it's an, uh, well, it's um, it is a mop. No, it's actually a sink. It's not a mop sink down on the ground. It's an existing sink. Okay. We're just rotating it around because we obviously you have to have one. So <clears throat> right, right. So that, those are just some suggestions that okay. I would see. Oh. That, that's really about what I have. Mr. Stanley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've uh, read the petitioner's answers to the uh, six special use areas, and I think that, uh, you know, that uh, he really meets the, the needs of the special use. I think a, a banquet hall would be something that would be uh, pretty useful down on, in that uh, part of town. I think you, you might uh, really found something to... Uh, attract some some business <clears throat> you 
you know, and you, and you do talk about the uh, kitchen area and the fact that you're going to be catering in food so you don't need as much space. So a lot of, well, I won't say a lot. I know that other uh, banquet hall facilities also, quote, cater in their furniture. So some people want 10 people tables or eight people tables or six people tables, whatever. And you just kind of cater in those table sizes and chairs to to whatever he wants. So, you know, doesn't mean that he has to store the stuff on site. He can store it off, off site. He can rent the tables, whatever. So, you know, I don't know that storage to me is a problem. It's an issue that the petitioner will have to uh, deal with somehow and whether he, he rents his tables or whatever, I mean, that's, that's up to him. The, the subdivision of the interior bothers me a little bit from the fire safety aspects. I don't know if it's going to be that heavy vinyl type partition, you know, that... Uh, I, I'm aware we're going to just have to sit down with the fire department and show them exactly what it is. And yeah, uh, there's exiting. I mean, if, if you're in a, in a room, I mean, if it's actually a room, it depends on the definition of a room, well, then you need a swinging door as an exit way. Well, but they do make part those partitions yeah, so it's, have it's, doorways, uh, so. it's a way uh, the effort will be to take this proposal and and test it you know uh, is are there any deficiencies in terms of exiting and yeah there can't be I mean so you know I, I think the interior of uh, the area is something that the petitioner is going to have to work out with the health department and the fire department and to meet all those codes. I, I am a little bit concerned, though, about the uh, exterior. I'm not sure how, how an awning that is just over one section of what is a shopping center is going to look like. So when you do something, make sure you devote a lot of right. attention I mean, to the aesthetics of... Uh, absolutely. The issue is it, you can't just stick something on your building. Exactly. If, it's, you know, if, it, if everybody looks at it and says, what is that? Well, then we've made a mistake. Now, the purpose of the awning is that uh, it's a wedding reception and it's raining. I hear you. Okay? And the limo pulls up and the <clears throat> bridal party wants to try to scamper out of there. So that's really the why of it. Right, I, I can see an absolute need for it, but maybe something even more portable, you know, that if there is inclement weather, you can wheel it out and, uh, you know, I don't want to say like a portable tent, but something there that's are, more mobile. You know, restaurants have them, they'll, they'll set up a, a little portable canopy, go out right out to the curb. Exactly, you know, I think that might be a little bit better than a permanent mounted structure. So, um, and I would guess that the majority of the business will probably be in the evening hour so that you'll be able to make use of parking that isn't being used by your other, although the, the laundromat probably goes 24 hours a day, right? The uh, the grocery store isn't open 24 hours, is it? No. No, but I think the laundromat is, right? No. It's, no? The laundromat closes at like 9 or 10. Yeah? Okay, so that now you'll have a lot more parking to uh, avail yourself of. I, I don't know that, I mean, I'm not really too concerned about parking. The parking lot, however, at nighttime is very low illuminated and I think you know back when the, the shopping center was created it wasn't intended to be a open at the nighttime what what kind of hours of operation will you run to at night midnight uh, maybe as, as the application says we're planning on like from five to midnight okay you know I think as long as it's going to be and let me just say I hope a heavy nighttime usage that maybe we need to increase the the wattage of the the bulbs in the the parking lot to 
Brighton because I think there's only two standards in the lot and each of those just has two four, four fixtures on it you know I the the lot is pretty dim at night and I think if you're going to have 500 people there you know I I'd, I'd really like to see you do something about the lighting anything that we can do in that area Andrew uh, we, we could uh, certainly take a look at it. The, um, I don't know that we have a photometric plan to compare it to to see if it's still living up to what it originally was uh, designed to do, but we could certainly take a look at it. And uh, if those fixtures could accept a, a higher wattage bulb, uh, that's certainly something we could look at. I, I just think that would be a, a good safety issue for, you know, I, I won't go there. I'm sure you'll have liquor sales and people will be very happy uh, as they leave the uh, facility at night. Uh, the parking lot, um, there's a lot of alligatoring around the outside and it's in a little deteriorating condition, especially around the outside end. You know, I, I saw uh, a used tire that's kind of just sitting out there at the edge of the uh, parking lot. You know, can we maybe get that cleaned up and, and made a little bit more presentable? I think that yes. will help uh, the operation. You know, I, I wish you the, the best of luck. I think it's a, a, a good idea for a shopping center that's been suffering a little bit. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you've latched on to something. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, a couple of comments. One, the um, you talked about signage, and I believe Commissioner Schaff discussed um, uh, landscaping. Landscaping is non-existent, and you've got islands, I believe, and you've got the landscaping around the. I'm sorry, the weeds around the uh, your signs that is just in, in terrible condition and so I, I don't I don't understand how you can <clears throat> present a special use such as a banquet facility without improving the exterior including landscaping and signage and to Commissioner Stylin's point the parking lot the parking lot is in desperate need of repair and restriping you raised some very legitimate issues. The parking lot, we have a pending lawsuit that was damaged when they did the water tunnel project at Camp McDonald. And all that heavy equipment, the generators, the bulldozers, the, all that caterpillar equipment was on Dr. Solka's property for about two to three months and damaged the parking lot. So we have an ongoing lawsuit seeking to recover damages to the parking lot. As far as general upkeep of the property, I'd like to point out that this space is approximately one-third of the shopping center. The other two-thirds of the shopping center are fully leased. This space has been vacant since May of 2005. A lot of efforts have been made to lease. There has been very little interest. There's been very little interest because the interior is going to require a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of construction to bring it up to a viable use. This is the property owner who's trying to revitalize his own property by building a banquet hall that initially he's going to run and operate. Okay. And that's all well and good. Completely understand that. But as part of that, it's, to me, it's, it's a total package. That exterior improvements, in my eyes, need to be made. Okay, I, I don't know how the rest of the board feels. We fully agree. Okay, and, and, and I don't think that they need to be, and, and I'm sure we've done it on many occasions, that we have um, put together uh, timelines that need to be met for landscape improvements, uh, resurfacing, restriping, of that so the cost and I understand there's a cost to this the cost is spread out for instance you say you're coming back with signage okay 
signage could include with that landscape plans and a plan as to when you're going to do that. So it, that can be spread out. I, I, don't, I don't want to put the financial burden all up front, but there are certain things that need to be done to that um, facility. It, you, just, you just can't put, in my eyes, and I'll let the board talk to that, that you just do that without improving because I'll be honest with you, if I, if I drove by that right now, I would not think about going into that facility to, to lease that for a banquet hall without some other modification. And I want it to succeed. I want it to succeed because that means tax revenue for us. And it's occupied, that means revenue for us, which is great. And, in, 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 and it improves that corner also. So I, I just... <coughs> If you're going to come bef come back to us with signage, which I assume you are because you're going to need that to identify this banquet facility, I would, in addition to that, I would like to see a landscape plan for whole, the whole site. That's what I'm looking for. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to see the... Uh, uh, a, a light study as well to to see how how lighting is impacted, sure. the landscaping for the entire thing. You know, some some comment from the petitioner on what he's going to do to the degradation that's in the parking lot. Right. So could we package this whole thing together? You know, maybe if they're planning on coming back. You know, I don't know how soon they're planning on coming back for signage, but could they, could we wrap this whole thing into a complete package? I mean, I'd, I'd like to go to give the petitioner some kind of assurance that we're either for or against the concept that he's trying to do, but I think I, I'd like to wrap the entire package up in one package well, rather than hoping that it'll come back with a parking well, lot addition, hoping that it'll come back with some lighting improvement, hoping that it'll come back with some landscaping improvement and not just take the special use and run away with it. You know well, what can I mean? we tie it? I understand. Can we tie it, uh, Mr. Jennings, can we tie it to um, can we tie it to occupancy that they at least have to come back to us um, with plans for Signage, landscaping, lighting, and, and parking. Can we also add one more thing? What about the door in the back that he offered to put in, which I'm, I'm in favor of? And then the discussion with the fire department regarding the separation screen. I mean, there's a few loopholes here that I, I would like to well, tie up before we send this on its way. Well, those, yeah. those kind of fall into two categories. Two cat yeah, I, I was just going to say that. Go one ahead. Is, one Jones. is the long-term uh, character, maintenance, uh, appearance of the exterior of the property, and one is the clarity of the plan. Um, you can, at the consensus of the commission, you can, if the plan is unclear, you can request uh, and vote on a continuation to clarify the plan so they would have an opportunity to show the, the, the dividing curtain, uh, address the table and chair storage, address this uh, potential rear corridor issue. Um, so that, that's the clarity of the plan. That I would distinguish from the long-term uh, improvement. You can tie, uh, there's any number of ways to, to uh, relate improvements to the property that are uh, seen as tied to this particular operation. You've got the retractable awning, I think, has a, a logical tie. It, it can't be built unless it comes back. Uh, the resurfacing the parking lot, in this case, the petitioner uh, is the, park, the property owner. The, the, rest, the uh, banquet facility would be the most substantial parking user uh, having some sort of um, <coughs> Having some sort of the, the striping, I think you could definitely uh, have some sort of um, uh, condition of approval relating the two. Um, so th there's any number of ways that, that these 
so you're saying it's actually two things that we should address, address them separately. I, I think that they. But then, kind of how do we, how categories. do we make sure that those things get done? Is my, I, you know, in the long run. Well, the first. If we approve this going forward, uh, for them to come back with, with the interior things that we're talking about and some of the other like the parking lot, but long range, how do we make sure that they come back to us? Well, there's two, again, two things. This can be tabled to get clarity of the plan. Right. Um, because there, to me, there seems to be a number of open issues that need to be clarified uh, before, before we move forward on that. And I'll, I'll take a poll on that eventually. Uh, probably just rehashing what Andrew said. And then if, if Andrew, what I'm looking for is I don't, I don't want to <coughs> inhibit them from starting the work and, and moving forward with this. But what I'd like to see with that tied to somehow occupancy or whatever, a plan to see the plan for <coughs> signage, lighting, and what's going to happen with the parking lot is where I would go. I see some nodding, so let's, let's take this one at a time. Um, are, there, are there enough questions about the clarity of the plan to table that piece of it? Commissioner Dorbin. Yes. Commissioner Zangara. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. 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 Okay. So. I'll make a motion to table. Second. We can hold on one second before we take that motion. Okay. Let me do another plan in that are we in agreement with my suggestion of putting of of the petitioner putting together a plan now and I'm separating it from the clarity uh, I'm, I'm separating it from the plan for the site plan so the special use to separating that because they could come back you know potentially maybe not next week if they get all that straightened out to approve this but at a later date uh, and tying that to occupancy coming back to us with a signage landscape and lighting plans two separate things Mr. right I, I right? think that's fine okay. mr. chairman a comment first yes um, many many years ago I don't know mr. chairman if you were around then but another major shopping <coughs> center very close to where you live came up they wanted to redo their facade and as phase one in phase two they were going to add landscaping and in phase three they were going to upgrade the condition of their uh, parking lot and install curb and gutter around the outside uh, the petitioner did phase one and while he showed us plans for phase two and phase three they were never accomplished to this date and that's probably 20 years later I would like to make sure that whatever we do we get something established concretely within a 20-year time frame. Okay, I, I understand that, but w what I would like to see is the plans, and then, and then we agree on those plans and put together. <clears throat> Commissioner Steinlein, we're talking, I know, I know what you're talking about, but we're talking a major corporation that, you know, really doesn't have a vested interest in this village, and I'm sure this petitioner does. So, it's I, the one right across the street from yeah, your house. So. Yeah, I know. So, um, I think we have to give them that that leeway in, in in this situation for for them to come before us with the plan. Yes, Commissioner Chef. You have to tie it to something. Tie well, it I, to the signage, or tie it to occupancy. That's what I said. I said, and, occupancy. and I agree. Okay, great. So, um, 
uh, do you understand, gentlemen, where we're coming, what we're, what we're talking about here? It sounds like, it sounds as though right now, there, I think somebody made a motion to table it. Table for clarity of this plant. And it's really around the storage of the tables, how that's going to be. You know, because I, there's, I assume there's, I've got to believe there's some fire code issues when you create a new door to another part of a building that wasn't part of this. There's going to be some fire code <coughs> questions there, I would think. The back door, the more clarity on how this is going to be divided. And there's a, so there's a number of questions there that general consensus is that I'm getting is that um, we need those because what happens is this goes before the village board and the village board wants everything in a nice package so so they can so they can make those so if we if we put those in there as conditions and we didn't see them beforehand <coughs> we've been burned in the past on those not necessarily that you would do it but we have been burned in the past where changes were made in between the time we approved it with a whole bunch of conditions that then went to the village board and just didn't make us look good. So that's the first piece. And then the second piece is that as a condition of, I think we're, we're going to probably tie to its occupancy, if we can do that, Mr. Jennings, is that we're going to want to see a plan for, for your landscaping, for your signage, for your landscaping, lighting, and um, parking, because all four of those things are not in very good shape. Not in very good shape. So that's the plan where we're going right now. There is no problem changing the lighting, adding power wattage or whatever it is. Landscaping was designed by this village. I did not design it. When I bought the property, there was no landscaping, there was no island, there was no bushes, there was nothing. This village came and designed it for me. All the bushes and all the trees and the name of the trees and the style of the trees were by employees of this village. And now you're telling me change everything. I don't know what does that have to change in those islands. Those islands were designed by this institution. No, I don't know what kind of changes I'm supposed to do down there. Lighting, there is no problem. I can change the lighting. I can do a lot of other things. Signage, no problem. But landscaping is designed by the village. I don't know what I'm supposed to change down there. I, I, don't, I don't think we use the word change. It's got to be kept up. Have you, have you, have you looked at the landscape that is underneath your signs, your monument signs? Uh, yes. Okay. So you have, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of taking an inventory of what's there right now and then adding, adding additional, additional vegetation. Landscape. Yeah, vegetation. It's not, it's, if, if the things are in good shape, then we don't like to, we as a board don't like to have things taken out, but we wanted things added too, so it, it looks attractive. There's not a whole heck of a lot of attractive things in those landscape beds right now. I, I don't know if you have notes, excuse me for interruption. Behind the signage, there is a, a family or two families that come sell tomatoes over the weekends. I cannot police them, I cannot throw them out. A police department comes down there, they pack and leave, and 10 minutes later, they are there selling tomatoes in my property. I don't know, you know, the life goes on, and in here, we don't see the life the way it's seen down there. There are two, three families come out to sell tomatoes, well, sir, and they throw their garbage down there, and I have to go and pick it up. Sir, that is, I believe that's going to be our recommendation. I'm sorry? That's going to be our recommendation right now. Okay. Okay? I understand where you're coming. understand those. Uh, but there are enforcement that I, I don't know about people planting tomato plants. I, you know, you can go there and pull them out. I, th that is not my concern. My concern is to 
upgrade that piece of property. And you're putting in a banquet facility that, that you want to attract people. You want to attract customers. And as a board, we've seen things come in that part of a package, in, in that case, is improving. I said improving. Improving what you have from a lighting perspective, a landscape perspective, signage, and parking. And, and yes, and the, and the parking lot. That's where we're going. Thank you. So, do we have a motion to table? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Powers, seconded by Commissioner Dorban, Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Powers? Yes. Commissioner Dorban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson, I say yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Stylin? Yes. Commissioner Zangara? Yes. And Chairman Rafato? Uh, yes. Do we have to? Yeah. Do we have a date, sir? We need. Yeah. We, we need to select the date. Um, you know. You can say whatever you. Before, before, you, before, you, before you start. Before you start the uh, as a public hearing, we do need to select a uh, specific date. Uh, we have a meeting. Uh, I'd say the first possible. Uh, and this depends on on um, your architect's ability to to work on this. Um, I would say the next available meeting for this would been would be uh, September twenty sixth. We need the plans. Uh, if you think you can do it in a couple of days, we would need it um, in hand uh, no later than nineteenth. I would say the. Um, our staff would need a right. hand uh, on Wednesday of next week. Will that give fire department and health department and all the other departments time to review it, Andrew? Yeah, they'll have to, they would have to, in all likelihood, review it in the week that follows before the meeting. <coughs> 26th. Does that seem possible? Yes, it does. And just um, from the aspect of clarity of the plan, if we can go over uh, uh, what we discussed. One second. Okay, so the way this, uh, what I'll print for you before you leave, has these categorized into pot potential conditions of approval. So based on the, the discussion uh, to this <coughs> point, what are the potential conditions of approval? Separated from that, I've got a list of items for clarification that are needed for the continued hearing, uh, which would be required to us no later than um, next Wednesday, which would be the 18th. Uh, potential conditions, excuse me, potential conditions of approval, uh, number one, the bar shall not operate independent of a catered banquet event, that's a liquor licensing uh, requirement. Number two, the additional parking stall shall be striped if it is determined by the village that they are needed. Number three, that the details of the tractable awning shall be submitted for minor appearance review uh, prior to installation. Um, number four, Complete liquor license application shall be submitted prior to review of the special use by the village board, uh, which I would recommend at this point um, uh, submitting so that it can be in, in hand. Uh, number five, plans for landscape restoration, lighting, signage, and parking lot repairs are submitted prior to final occupancy. Uh, then I have under clarification needed. Uh, clear plan for table, chair storage, and dividing curtains. Uh, seating plan for the lobby area. And kitchen plan modified as needed to address code requirement for dry storage and potential third exit. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Seating plan for the lobby uh, You mentioned that you plan on hosting banquet events in it. I don't uh, know that we've counted any sort of occupancy for it. some conceptual layout of how it would be. 
And, and just to just to clarify, you had you have no intention of having two two events in the space, uh, is what you had said, correct? You can't so, have two live bands. Right. Okay. Okay. I, just want, I was typing. I want to make sure that I heard that. Also, there's potential, you know, exiting problems. I mean, I can't get back to that back because there's something going on. You know. Okay. And I, I do need to. Did we have a motion that had the date attached to it? Uh, no, no, we probably didn't. So, yeah, so I do need that. a motion to table with the date certain. Is that what you need? Uh, to, a motion to continue the hearing. Oh, a motion to continue. Of September 26th. Uh, we have a motion to continue to September 26th. So moved. Second. Uh, that's a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Thank you. Sir, you wanted to make a comment? No. <laughs> no. No, okay. <laughs> I, I know you were asking. I, you know, this is... It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I, no. Can I? He's probably telling you no for a reason. <laughs> no worries. Can I start working inside the banquet hall, or I is cannot the, start I mean, at all? As the owner of the property, uh, you can you have the you can submit for a demolition permit. You can submit for permits related to electrical things okay. that aren't that aren't. Um, if there's a if there's a need to do that type of work you can submit for a demolition permit okay. uh, we typically won't review a permit for improvements that are related to a special use until that special use is, is okay. approved but if there's other work you need to do you can submit a permit for that okay thank you thank you thank you thank you so we'll be in touch over the next week um with yeah. the revised plans okay thank you Moving on while we get signed. Uh, approval of minutes for August 8th, 2013. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of minutes for August 15th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of minutes for August 22nd. All those in favor? Or make a motion. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Jumping ahead. Yeah. Right. So moved. We are second. Not that late. We are second for that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hold on one second. I'm at the end, so. Moving on to other business, Mr. Jennings. I had a request uh, from the commission to uh, bring the um, plan commission workshop priority list uh, that we had I think most recently discussed at the end of May, beginning of June, following the um, joint plan commission board meeting. Uh, we had a request to bring that table back as for, uh, for a refresher. Um, we distributed it uh, prior to the meeting. Um, there's been one, uh, one additional request. Uh, if you look to the bottom of the, uh, depending on what, how, how you printed it. <laughs> if, you, if you look at the end of the list, we have added uh, an item that was requested. Uh, zoning cone amendment related to uh, requirements for planning developments. Um, just for clarification, uh, is that request um, specific to application requirements? Is there is there something in particular? Is it a procedural request? Um, so when we have a, a zoning code workshop, we can sort of direct it and uh, one way or the other. This was uh, from Commissioner Schaff. Well, in, in reviewing the PUD requirements, there are some contradictions. I, I felt that there are some contradictions. Okay. Um, the, the first one was uh, uh, in the PUD requirements, it says 
uh, a concept review will have no approvals. And, and then what's contradictory about it is that uh, masonry uh, requirements are, uh, are set at concept review. Uh, it, it just, there, there's, there's the contradiction. Yeah. Um, the other, um, the, the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, the other, the, the, there was something in, in the, um, and this happened at the Northgate Crossing, um, where they, they put in uh, private drives. And it states right in the PUD requirements, no private drives. So yeah, that I know, think is a I think that's relatively I, I hope something that should be relatively easy for us to clarify in the code. What it, it should, what but it should be changed. You know, if if we if we are not going to if we're going to advocate, you know, uh, village roads, you know, and to their to the village specs, then and. and we don't want that. We want the private drives, and then let's change code. I, I, there's no problem with that, but it needs to be resolved. Okay. So that's something, Andrew. We could probably do in a workshop. Sure. And the other, the other workshop um, that we were we were uh, looking at is the recent um, medical marijuana legislation approved by the state. We need to make sure that we are. Um, uh, ahead of that, and yes. Had some discussion of. Right. Did everybody hear that? No. Um, besides workshopping the PUD, um, uh, investigating and looking into the, the 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 impact of the new medical marijuana um, legislation that is has passed, right? It has passed. I believe there's a time frame for implementation right and what the village attorneys have suggested and, and what I've discussed with uh, chairman Rafato is um, taking a look at the state regulations and seeing how that lines up with our code and determining if we need to write anything <coughs> in particular um, there are two land use classifications in the state code uh, one is um, a I forget the exact term, but uh, effectively <coughs> dispensing, and the other is cultivation. Um, they have two different sets of rules, uh, two different zoning classifications that would apply. So uh, what we're working with right now is our GIS department to take the, the proximity regulations and apply them to our zoning and see if this is even an issue for us. Um, our initial reaction was that if it's an issue, it's a very, very limited one, although one that we may still benefit from classifying and defining um, in advance of uh, any change in the state law. Good. Uh, so those are, um, well, I guess from the aspect of the, I know you're looking at the, med med excuse me, the medical marijuana legislation, how it fits our, into our code. Uh, the PUD. No, what we have done in the past is um, we've prioritized these, as you can see. Um, I think we used a one, two, or a three when we went through this. So based upon that, um, from a prioritization standpoint, one being the lowest, three being the highest, Commissioner Dorban, what would be your priority on the review of the PUD and and some of the um, inconsistencies in there? Well, it would have to be one being the highest. One being the I th uh, the other way. Other way, one being the lowest, one being the least important, three being the highest. I, th three. Commissioner Zangara, I would agree. Three, 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 three. 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 I just want to say one just to be different. No, I, I would agree. I, I, uh, so I, I think that's a, a high priority item that we would like to done. Now, again, looking at this priority list, um, Commissioner Stylin, I was just going to say, if, were there any comments, questions about these? 
Go ahead, Commissioner Stanton. Uh, one of my uh, favorite issues, the uh, sidewalk policy issue, is in the done completed side of the puzzle. When we last discussed it, we sent a recommendation to the village board, and I believe staff worked on a uh, method methodology of trying to fund new sidewalk implementation to go along with that plan that uh, seems to have gone by the wayside at least uh, so can we can we get it off the done list and back to uh, well it, it has been on the done list for an extended period of time because the plan commission's job on it is done there's nothing there's nothing at this point that the plan commission um, needs to do to further this uh, right now is uh, it has been presented with the staff recommendation to the board the board uh, what we were seeking from the board was direction so that we could create the legislation that would implement it um, the piece of that that there wasn't a consensus on was the funding mechanism uh, so what we've done is we've uh, we're trying to look at that that the details of the funding um, specifically and then bring it back to the board and that's that is being done right now actually with uh, in conjunction I, with the, I, the budget I, I do hear you and I, I do understand but in actuality because the last piece isn't done none of it's been done but my concern is and I <clears throat> continue to hear the statement over and over again that according to our ordinances, the only time we can ask a petitioner to install a sidewalk is at the time of property subdivision. The only time we can require. Exactly. Is so you can, you can we, ask, you cannot require outside of subdivision. The only time we can require a sidewalk to be installed is when property is subdivided. So we can change though recommend changes possibly to the ordinance or rule that makes that statement to add some other times when it might be advisable to install sidewalks like maybe when a PUD comes in like the one that just came in on Northgate it might be advisable to say maybe we can require sidewalks be installed on a property at that time all i'm saying is let's get it off the done completed list that nothing's been done on and maybe bring it back into the list and discuss some other ways of accomplishing the same goal and i'll leave that to the pc to decide How do I put that concisely? I'm not sure. Um, is it is it? Let's see. Right now, in, right now, in, front, in it's back in it's back in community development as far as clarification on some pieces for the village, right? The for plan, the board, the plan commission finalize the recommendation. That recommendation uh, was added on to with some very specific suggestions from staff about the exact linear footage of sidewalk to install over a seven year period, how to fund the installation of that linear footage of sidewalk. Uh, the board uh, discussed the, the installation, was in favor of it, requested that the exact details of the funding mechanism be re-examined and, and the statement made was that the, the proposed funding mechanism may ultimately be what's approved but they just wanted us to double check and make sure uh and, and bring it back and that is being done right now that's being done in conjunction with um the budget review process. so commissioner stylin your your question is more not so much around uh pricing structures but how and when 
the need for sidewalks is applied? Well, so, let me just say the, the sidewalk plan was, I mean, we did that as part of the streetscape subcommittee and came up with a prioritization mechanism, if you remember correctly, and drew circles around bus stops and public buildings and all that kind of stuff and kind of addressed where sidewalks needed to be installed in a priority kind of mechanism. And I think staff put together a plan to commit to doing the high priority areas over what was an 11 year period of time. And where did but that? All, and all I'm saying is maybe there are some additional ways of moving that forward, right? In, in requiring uh, possible PUDs to install sidewalks and, and maybe there are some other um, so is it a review of our prioritization plan? I'm trying to get it down into a couple of words that we as a commission can decide whether it's a, in, in our eyes it's a high priority, medium, or low priority. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get to. And I, I, I don't hear it yet. Um, what, what I'm hearing is... Changing how, not changing. Um, when would we require? When would we require sidewalks? Okay, that's basically right. Okay, so when when petitioners come before us, when would we require sidewalks? So based upon that, does everybody understand that? So Commissioner Stylin is asked to. Bring us piece of the of the um, um, sidewalks, a piece of the sidewalks, back to not completed in our priority list. So again, and that and that piece is when. What did I just? What did I? Say? <laughs> I when when can we require sidewalks? Right. To when can we re require sidewalks? Okay. Great. So from a priority again, one to three, Commissioner Schaff, one to three. Two. Commissioner Powers. Two. Uh, Commissioner Stiler. I'll go with a two. Commissioner Johnson. One. Commissioner Zangara. One. Commissioner Dorbin. Two. And I would say two. That's a 12. Okay, so we've got that on there. Okay. Uh, any other comments about the priority list? Well, you know, tonight was a perfect example of uh, why we should have a brochure regarding landscaping. If we had something in place, we wouldn't be having to ask the petitioner to make sure they put in this or that or enough of this or that. And I, I really would like to see us workshop that landscape brochure item again. I mean, we worked on it before. I'd like to see it bring, bring it did, back. Well, we, we got it to a point. Mm -hmm. We got it to a point where it was really in community development's hands. But the reality is the time and the money to get that done. And I don't think we got that commitment or we asked for, well, maybe we didn't ask for a commitment from the village board if that was something that you could do. And what I think I heard the last time was that your dance card is pretty full right now. Well, I'm not asking for a full color brochure. I, I'm asking for some kind of guidelines to give these people. It can be black and white, but some kind of guidelines to give these folks when they come in so we're not hounding them to death when they are here. That's all. I'm trying to streamline this situation. Understood. But even that, even that takes time. Um, Andrew, how would I, is it something that... How do we go about moving that? I agree with Commissioner Dorban. If we had something at a, at a high level that we could, 
that we could have that we could present it's the best way to attend. you're talking about not the, the the more expensive of the two things that we were looking at before was revamping title 12 and then referring back to it back to it so I, our idea was to have the consultant who does that also produce the brochure for us okay um now we can put out an rfp for that job and see what price it comes back at if it if that job comes back at fifty thousand uh, dollars we send it to the board and see if at fifty thousand dollars it's still something that they're interested in doing if it comes back at ten thousand dollars we send it to the board and see if we can get a contract with a consultant on it what what i would be what, what i'm concerned about from a staff perspective is producing a brochure that has no relationship to a code what we're going to what we're suggest what you're suggesting to them isn't required and the petitioner like the petitioner you saw tonight um, if there's no requirement um, behind the suggestion there's I, I'm not sure that it would have the desired impact I mean I I think we can put together a brochure of attractive landscaping by our staff as a suggestion but the it's the tying it to something of consequence that, that well, we need help with okay and which is title 12 right and which we've talked about taking all the landscape throughout the other titles and trying to put it into one title 12 right that's correct well I I would uh, hold on Commissioner Stein I would like to see I think that might be a, a, a good place to start that we get some type of estimate on that Commissioner Stein well I'm just Paul do you have any uh, knowledge and background in landscaping uh, well uh, concepts and stuff I guess like tonight my issue brought up the points brought it up was not so much the landscaping because like the petitioner said is he did do the landscaping I is and I'm not too familiar yet with do we have anything in there about maintaining the landscaping I think that was more of the issue of yes he did it 20 years ago but it's not so that, that I guess that was a question I was going to bring up is do we have something that says that they have to maintain it as you know I, I was just wondering Jim if maybe uh, you know the the streetscape subcommittee did uh, you know I, I think a pretty good job of broadly tackling three areas how about if you created another little landscaping group that that got together and just kind of tackled this issue from a, how do we do it is is the problem really this or that or do we need more pictures do we need and then kind of come up with a, a small team consensus of of what we might be able to or, or what the team might suggest for a landscaping um, objective I, you know what I mean maybe well but I think the objective it, irrespective of I would think that part of that objective then is to um, eventually it's still going to have to go back and in, tied into ordinances and stuff but part of that though is is okay let me think about that one okay about a subcommittee oh um, could be something that we could do let me think about that mr. chairman yes sir yes mr. Powers. Um, Andrew let me ask a question because I, I think the brochure is good but where I got a little bit confused is when the when the petitioner here was from Mako and he had the, uh, you know like a landscape plan but I think I was struggling and I think Commissioner Darvin was struggling too with the, the density of what was actually in there and when I see a when I saw like Starbucks plan they had you know the names and they had like the quantity of what they're putting in there by seeing what Mako proposed I didn't have an issue per se with the, the plan but it's like I I couldn't get a grasp on the quantity of what was being planted in there in that area and if there were numbers attached that maybe I would I would get a better feeling and maybe that's where a lot of my questions come from because I'm not seeing that 
And I'm just wondering, in general, on, on a, do we have any kind of like a sample landscape plan that, that if a petitioner is going to pour out the money to do one for us, that could be get down to that type of detail? Um, I know it may be a little bit more, but I think it would help me out with the. Do we have, I mean, we can point people to other approved landscape plans. We can. Um, I know everybody. Everybody probably does it different, but if. I don't know, if it, you know, maybe what I see, you know, um, trying to gather with quantity and feeling what's going in there. Yeah, one, one suggestion on the quantity is if the if the plan, uh, the, the if the plan doesn't uh, isn't clear, you can always table it. Um, the plan can be brought back uh, to be as, <coughs> as detailed as is needed to make it under uh, clearly understood. Um, but we do have sample plans. Um, the uh, some of our other signs have have very detailed landscape plans. You can always hand them to people um, during the uh, application process and just show them for the, some of the Andrew. better plans. Can't hear Andrew louder. We do have sample landscape plans that uh, we can work with people and provide to them. Most people aren't particularly interested in it, though. So. But I, I appreciate the fact that we can table it and send them, send them away and bring them back. I'm trying to think of how we can make it more streamlined so that we don't have to table it and send them away, bring them back. That's not being real friendly. I mean, when we have big things like several items to send them away, okay, that's fine. But if we can make it easier for them and tell them up front what we need and want, why shouldn't we do that? I mean, I just think that that streamlining it, being more friendly, it, it's going to make go through here more smoothly. It's going to get to the board faster. I just think we're, you know, kind of not being fair to the petitioner. Well, they, they did get approved um, in one meeting in this case. Um, I, I'm, I guess I'm not understanding the, uh, the concern exactly. Um, if you are asking us, can we create four or five plans and just let them pick one and say they're going to go with landscape option B, is, is that what you're referring to? Is sort of a. Like I, I a guess what we had, what the group of us had worked on before that we made the presentation to the board is where I'm going. Okay. We, we kind of gave percentages, we gave some suggestions, we gave some pictures, we gave some ideas. And I think that that's kind of where I'm going. Yes, we do approve it most of the time, but what we're saying is work with staff. Now that, that it seems to me that we're dumping it back on you. That I didn't think that that, I don't personally think that's appropriate. I think we should be doing the job and doing it and completing it, sending it to you, rather than making you do work again. That just, that just doesn't seem right. So does that, though, translate into a menu of plans where we give them, here's five options. Your, your landscape plan is lackluster. Here are five sample plans. Take one of them. Um, and we, we do it ourselves so that there's no landscape architect whose plans are being stolen. <laughs> so we give them a plan and say, here, here's a plan. Pick it. You know, is that... I guess what I'm trying to understand is, is that we, we did change the code um, to refer to the percentages. We have updated that fairly recently. Um, but what we, what we don't have is, is sort of a, um, you know, plan A is a landscape plan, 40 to 50 square feet. Plan B is a landscape plan, 100 to 120. Mm -hmm. is, is that, is I, that I what guess what I guess what I'm saying to you is if they come in and say we're going to put a quart plant, I want a gallon plant, okay? I, I want some more specifics. I, I mean, I don't want them to come in with this little, this size plant and when I want a plant that's substantial coming in. You know, we've been through this. A perfect example is um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, our anticipation when that went in was that the bushes would be much taller to block some of those, some of the uh, car lights. What we got was much less than what we anticipated. 
and we had to wait years for it to grow. Another example is right out here at the Village Hall. We, our anticipation was that we would have a much fuller foliage out here than is what's there. So I mean, there's those kinds of things that I guess I'm saying and, I would like to see. And, and I think, you, you know, if you look at the Mako landscape plan tonight, I mean, I think that unfortunately is typical of the kind of plans that we get. And I can't remember the three varieties of planting materials that they had on the plan, but there were no quantities. You had to guess which odd circles. Andrew, I saw you counting the uh, circles. So, I mean, the staff you know. did not recommend approval of that. I it, mean, that's to, to that point. We, we had recommended that you have a plan that be more detailed prior to it, making it. Exactly. So I, so I think, you know, at least what I'm hearing is we need to set like, an example that says the, but plan, again, the plan ought to state quantity, again, though, size of plant, okay, you know, five But again, gallon. we had the opportunity, had the opportunity to, and staff said that they would recommend approving it. And what did we do? We approved it. We had the opportunity to not to approve it. So again, part of this is our issue. I'm not I, certain. I, I'm I, not certain that a brochure is going to address these issues. I, I disagree with that completely, Jim. I, I be, because if we have if we have in our code that says that we have to have quantities. Do we have that in there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but and maybe that's something we need to workshop. That percentage. What, percentage. Square footage. Okay. Percentage. Square footage. Percentage. We have those in there. What, what, and, and I'm all for a you know, brochure that gives examples of what types of planting we're looking for, but to give them examples of, of. Somebody else's plan? Uh, yeah, to me it doesn't, I, I don't know, doesn't, doesn't make sense to me, but then again, maybe, you know, I, I need to think about this subcommittee a little bit more before, you know, I, I recommend something like that. I actually worked on a project where I parking lot where we did landscaping and I know everyone's been talking about not knowing quantities or not knowing what it's going to look like what we ended up doing was every plant listed we had the landscaper give us a picture on a disc so they knew exactly what didn't have to you know you didn't have to put it all together but at least you had a concept of what was being planted where it helps very visually. Well, we've had that. Okay. We've had that in some of our proposals that come before us. But in a company like Mako, you're not going to get that. This small, this guy who took over this franchise is renting the building, is working on a shoestring budget, doesn't have the money to hire a full, and we have to, we have to take those things into consideration. But who developed a landscape plan? He came here with a landscape plan. Just detail it a little bit more. He's got the guy in there, tell him to do a little bit more. He may have done that himself. We don't know that. And, you know, we've got, there, there's got to be some leeway there. Okay, so from that standpoint, uh, from a landscape brochure, um, I'll take into consideration the landscape subcommittee, and at the next meeting, we can discuss that more. Any other questions about, the, any other comments, questions about the priority, PC priority list? No? Okay. Andrew, is there any other business? Um, no, I think, uh, I think that's it. Okay. Um, any other other business? Commissioner Dorbian? Nothing, thank you. Commissioner Zangara? I have nothing. Commissioner Johnson? Nothing. Commissioner Steinman? Well, sure, I've been kind of devoid for the last uh, month or so, so uh, <clears throat> I, I'd like to uh, get some information about uh, property maintenance requirements. It, it bothers me a little bit driving around town, right, that, uh, you know, I, I see uh, parking lot uh, lighting standards that are having peeling paint and rusting and, you know, uh, uh, the 
Jiffy Lube just had their uh, uh, mansard uh, roof uh, finally unpeeled. I don't know if they're going to leave it <laughs> silver or whatever or paint it again. Um, it's been completed. It's done. That is the finished version. You know, but I, I, I drive around and I see, uh, like one of the commissioners said, you know, I see a, a row of parking lot hedge uh, bushes. But you know what? Every third one is dead or there's a couple blank spaces that, uh, you know, the, the bushes have deteriorated over the years and now there's a, a devoid or I see a, 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 a tree that's uh, still got a couple green leaves on it, but more or less the tree is dead or dying. When, when, two questions, when does the village take the initiative to get the property owners to do something, and is it even the village's prerogative to do that, or, or do we need to motivate the property owners themselves more to take care of those issues themselves, right? I mean, how, when, when does alligatoring like was in the parking lots, a couple of the parking lots that we saw tonight, you know, when does alligatoring become bad enough that the village says, now you have to take action, you know what I mean? Uh, we, we write, um, we write tickets on all of those things. Um, we write notices of violation, typically before a ticket. Uh, the notice of violation, depending on the severity of the issue and um, uh, the um, severity of the issue and the impact, I guess, on the, on the public, um, we'll have a time frame. So you may have 10 days, 14 days to resolve your notice a violation before you get a ticket. Uh, the ticket process, and I think this is one of the issues that you see, the ticket process is not um, an easy, it, there's not necessarily an easy solution. Um, we have tried to streamline that. We have in-house, uh, in this room actually, uh, adjudication of municipal violations uh, that I'd say has uh, much, that, that has had an impact on the, on the speed at which we can resolve these issues. We don't necessarily refer things <clears throat> to court outside of our adjudication um, nearly as regularly as we, we had to in the past. So it's cut, on our, it's cut down our costs, it's cut down our time for getting compliance. Um, the, the question of does the village initiate those? Absolutely, the village inspectors. Uh, I would say the shopping centers are most likely to be inspected. The, the, number of, the number of inspections that are required of shopping centers is the greatest. Uh, there's the tenant turnover. There's tenant turnover in shopping centers. There's restaurants. There's food uses that require multiple inspections. There are uh, any number of, of things, uh, just their visibility alone ends up triggering inspections. So shopping centers are the most likely to get a parking lot alligator in complaint um, initiated by the village. Uh, the industrial, uh, out of the out of the way industrial is the least likely um, to get a drive-by inspection uh, noticing it. Those we tend to pick up on a certificate of occupancy for a building permit or a business license. Um, so, sure, the village does initiate those, um, but the, the village's role is, typically is seeking voluntary compliance. It is better, faster, easier, less expensive for us to go notice a violation and resolve the notice of violation before we get into the tickets. Uh, the tickets are... Um, they, you can pay off a ticket that has such a low value on it um, that it extends the process and extends it and extends it. So um, we, we try to achieve voluntary compliance. Um, it's much more effective. Um, but yeah, we, we do initiate those actions. But I mean, when, 
you know, we, we've planted a lot of the landscaping plans we've approved lately had daily, a lot of daylilies in them. And I've noticed that the daily, del, de, well, this is going to be a tongue twister for me. The daylilies seem to be, well, if there's one green leaf left on it, I mean, it, there are no flowers, there's no robust vegetation. You can tell that it's not happy. You know, when, when will the village take action? Does it have to outright die first, or if it's not the healthy and robust, do you take action? If, uh, if, you're, if you're referring to the property maintenance inspectors, uh, what they would see in all likelihood is probably going to be a tree. A dead tree stands out more than a daylily that doesn't have enough flowers on the green. I mean, How about I, if it I, were I don't know. 10 or 20 daylilies that all you have is stubble. Uh, if you take a stubble daylily to a judge, they will <laughs> laugh at you. So I, I don't think our, our property maintenance inspectors do not seek out things that are difficult to argue in court. That, I think, stubbly green daylily is on that list for them. Uh, I can talk to them tomorrow and ask them, but I would, I would guess that dead tree is easier to take to court than... I guess what then I, I guess if it seems to me that then they have some type of criteria that they use judgment experience our our property maintenance inspectors have been to court uh, they're in court all year um, and most of our property maintenance inspectors have um, at least 10 years of experience doing what they're doing some of them 15 20 years of experience so it's they know um, and they've been around wheeling. They're very familiar with wheeling, uh, and they've they've got experience now in our adjudication system. So this is these are uh, these issues are constantly there's there is a full time but, staff constantly but, working on this. But that's good to know because maybe we shouldn't be asking petitioners to plant things that we know we won't be able to uh, enforce in the future. Well, I'm, I'm giving that example. It's the example you gave. If a if an entire planting bed of daylilies is dead, it's more obvious than daylilies that aren't flowering productively. I mean, you have certain flowers require you to deadhead them. Daylilies aren't necessarily on that list, but if you if you have high maintenance flowers and somebody acquires a property with a bunch of high maintenance flowers on it, it's not going to look as good if they switch landscapers and the new landscaper is not a uh, perennial flower deadheading expert. So, um, live plants, though, that are on the plan that are relatively well maintained are not going to catch the eye of a property maintenance inspector. Thank you. Is there, so basically what you're telling is the, 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 what'd you call them? Property maintenance? Property maintenance managers. So they're just using their their years of experience, not only in what they're looking at, but their experience in the uh, court process to make decisions. They ha there, there are judgments made, absolutely. There's judgments made on on that, um, you know, some of it's, you know, if you have live plants, I'm giving you the example that was given to me. If you have live plants that don't appear to be out of sorts, I can't imagine one of our property maintenance inspectors writing a ticket on that instead of the ticket on the foot tall grass next door. So, for instance, the foot tall grass right. complaint is going to get the ticket. Right. It's going to stand out. The dead tree is going to stand out. The fence falling over is going to stand out. Okay. Big ticket items. Obvious things. So, for instance, at the my favorite place, <laughs> the child daycare center, those evergreens that are still dead. <laughs> yeah, put Pete in there too. Yeah. Is that is that something that they would ticket? We so Peter and just yes, yeah. just in generality, not I don't yes. I don't need to know if that's been ticketed, so, but, but in generality, the, would the, that 
be something that would the, be taken um, in. The art of property maintenance inspection, uh, you have property maintenance inspectors who know the property owners, who uh, know our staff. They can come find us if they need. If there's a question of what's on the plan, um, we, there's some amount of internal communication that's required for these types of things. So, uh, one, the one, one of the two examples you gave uh, is, is, a, is a ticket. One of the two examples you gave is a CO issue. Uh, the, there's different methods of enforcement okay. that are available to us. Um, occasionally, you dig into something, and the story, um, the example of the, the daycare center, uh, those plants are not on an approved plan. They were voluntarily planted on the neighbor's property, and they keep dying. So they're working with the neighbor to give them a new plant that isn't dead. Um, so sometimes there is good. there's another <laughs> layer of, of nuance to it. Okay. Um, yeah. and, and, and as I said, oh. the property maintenance inspectors definitely notice the dead plants. Like that. Okay. I, I just think as, you know, to Commissioner Silent's point, if we have some of this information, it's, it's probably helpful. Um, an idea that, okay, go ahead. Okay, that was fine. Commissioner Powers? I have nothing, thank you. Commissioner Schaff? Um, I believe there's a meeting scheduled for next week. There is. Yes, there is. And I will not be able to make that meeting. September 19th. The 19th, yeah. Right. And speaking Helen's, of... Yeah, uh, Helen's going in for surgery. Okay. And speaking of that, October 24th, I'm not certain you have a meeting scheduled, but if there is one scheduled, I will not be there. I will be in Italy. So, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.